Hey what's up guys, back again with another video on the Node.js and Express series. This episode I'm going to show you how to work with post routes. Captain Long John Silver, I'm going to reel them in. Got on goat fur, cream color coat from Burberry's Den. I'm a monster with a nice watch on name, not been 10. I'm a go get everything Mother Earth transcend. Okay guys, now that we have the capability of running, you know, SWF files on our um, website and, you know, playing games on our website, let's actually make it so we can add games to our website without having to actually type it in manually each time inside of the code of the website. So basically we want to make it so that we don't have to restart the website um, every time we want to add a game basically, okay? And that will be a really cool feature so that our website is more, um, I don't know, just more awesome anyway. So basically we're, the way we're going to do that is by using what's called post routes, okay? And post routes, there's a special type of route that you can use to send data, okay? And we've actually used them before whenever we use the, exp um, what was it called? We were using the API, you know, the Unsplash API a few episodes ago, and we did the, um, the uh, we were searching for, you know, pictures and stuff like that. That was technically a post route, but we're actually going to be using post routes with uh, Express, which is going to allow us to actually get information and do some really cool stuff, okay? So basically, post routes is what you use whenever you're working with forms inside of, you know, um, Node.js and Express applications and, you know, other forms of uh, APIs and stuff like that. Because post routes isn't just for, you know, Node.js and Express. It's actually for HTTP. It's a type of HTTP request, okay? And uh, so basically, um, if we go to the interwebs here and we go to any website um, and we press enter, that's basically doing a Git, uh, a Git route, of course, or a Git request, whatever, okay? That's whenever you start searching URL, right? But there's a special type of request that can be made. If you type in a URL and then post it, basically calling upon the post route, that will not get the route, it'll post the route, okay? So basically, what I mean is that we can do something like this. You can make it where we do uh, something like this, slash add game, okay? And this could be like our simple git route like we have here, for example. We have, you know, these routes here, which are simple git routes. As you can see, it says git. And so it's getting a web page, right? like this route here and then it's sending them to this web page right so that's what that's doing right but with the post route we can have this as a git route right but we can also have another form of this route here and that's going to be a, a post route okay so we can have two forms actually more than two forms of the same route which is going to be pretty cool so this will be a post route okay so this one's going to get information for example um, you know a web page because it's going to send them to the game web page for example on this one or we can post information which is going to send information through the route and then we could do stuff with that information, okay? And what we're going to do is take the information from the form that we're going to be using to actually add games to our website, take that information, and then we're going to store it inside of our little database here, okay? So that's what we're going to do there. So let's get started, okay? So hopefully that's a good enough explanation for you. But anyway, um, let's get rid of this. We don't need this. So let's go down here, and the first thing we're going to do is make a new route, okay? And this route is going to be the route that's going to hold our form where they can type in the information to add a game. If I say book, by the way, if I say, if I say book instead of game, I mean game because um, the reason I say book is because I've been working on a um, a reading website where you can read online books, so that's why sometimes I say book instead of game. So hopefully you understand that. <laughs> but anyway, so this route we'll just call it add book, like we just had up here as an example. And so this is going to be or not book, not book. I mean add game. Anyway, um, so now we're going to get a callback function, of course. And of course, this is going to be a simple uh, git request, okay? So, meaning it's just going to do this. It's going to do res.render, and it's going to take them to the add book page, okay? So, we need to actually make this page. So, we'll go to views, right-click, new file, add book.ejs. There we go. Oh, I, I typed books by accident, so we'll change it to books. There we go. So, then we could have our partials if we want to. So, include partials, header, like that, and then we'll have our footer here, include partials footer, okay, so let's test this out, let's go ahead and uh, run the server here, okay, so we're in the file, or the folder here, so right click, and then we'll do nodemon, like that, and that should start the server on port 3000, so local 3000, oh, this needs to hurry up and load, oh, there we go, so now if I reload here, here it is, okay? So as you can see, the website is working, but let's go to games. That still works from last episode. So let's go to add game, add game, okay? And as you can see here, it loaded the header, and if we had a footer, it would also load because we included it, of course, but it actually works, okay? So as you can see, we had the post route, I mean the get route of the add game route, okay? So this will get the add game page for us, okay? And then now we can display stuff, okay? 
So like I said, we're going to be displaying a, um, a form which is going to allow them to type information in for the game that they want to add, okay? So let's actually um, add stuff to the add book, um, or add game. I did add book. Oh my gosh, I'm such a fool. Add game. But anyway, sorry about that. But let's go ahead and actually, um, you know, add some code here. So let's actually go to the Bootstrap website and we'll pull up an example that we can use to copy and paste so we can have a form that we can use. Uh, so we'll do Bootstrap 4. Move this over here. Uh, not this, not this website. It's just Bootstrap 4. Okay. Then we'll go to uh, documentation. We'll go to components. There's a new version. What? Uh, hey, whatever. Um, so then we'll go to form forms. Here we go, and we could use this form as an example. So we'll just go ahead and copy this here, and I'll move this on my other screen. So I'll just paste this here, and then we can start uh, editing it however we want to. So the first thing we want to do is just change some of these labels here. So we'll name this uh, name. So this will be the name of the game. Okay. And then we'll, we don't need this thing. We'll just get rid of this. So basically, I'm just going to play around with this until it looks like how I want it to look like. And then some of these we don't actually need, like this here. Uh, for the placeholder, we'll just put an example game. So like run three, something like that. For the password, we'll just copy this one because we don't want a password input. We just want a text input. Oh, and this one's not a text input. It's an email input. So we'll just change this one to text. There we go. So name, and then we want the creator of the game. So creator, that will be the second one because what we're doing is, if we go to here, uh, we want all of these to be at the um, on this form, okay? So they can type in all the information. So title, creator, width, height, file name, and thumbnail file. So now we need the width and height. So we'll go ahead and add those. So we'll just get rid of this down here. And we'll just copy this one right here. Okay. And we'll paste it right there. And then we could do... Uh, we'll change this to size, okay? And then we could do something like this. We'll just copy this twice. And then the first one will be width and the second one will be height. So we'll say like 480, for example. The placeholder is an example, of course. You should know how to do all of this, by the way. It's simple HTML. I mean, it has CSS in it, but it's simple HTML, basically, okay? But anyway, so we'll say uh, light bringer 777 for an example for the creator of the game. And we'll change this to 680, 640 by 680. I think that's the dimensions people use. And of course, let's change the 4. Oh, we don't even need a 4, actually. We'll get rid of this here. Okay. Awesome, so that looks better. So let's check it out, see what progress we made on this. So we'll go here, reload. And it looks like we have a form here. So that, that looks awesome, right? So let's uh, add some more stuff here. Let's add a thing at the top. You know, a simple header, something like this. Add a game here. There we go. And then let's add something else. We need the width and height. We got that. And then we need the file name and the thumbnail file. Okay, so those two, those will be two text thingies from here. We'll just copy these. So file name. Oops. Okay. So we'll just change this to an example file name. Uh, booger. Dot SWF. That's an example. Of course, and then we'll have the thumbnail name. Okay, and then we'll call it uh, thumbnail.png, something like that, right? Okay, so now that we actually have the form first, actually, let's check it out, then we'll do the next part. Okay, so this all works as you can see here. So now what we want to do is somehow take all this information once they type it in, you know, like here. We want to do something to that information, we want to send it into our application so we can take that information and then store it in our mini database okay so we need to press submit and then something will happen okay so the way we can do that of course is actually running a post request okay so the first thing you want to do is type the action okay so the action is going to be the the request that is made the route that is made okay so we're going to do add book because that will be the add book route okay and so the next thing is going to be the method okay so normally of course whenever you're calling upon the add book route you're going to run a um, a get request as you can see here this is our, did I type add book? I did, didn't I? I'm such an idiot. Add game. I'm so sorry. Anyway, so if we, normally when we type the, ad, uh, type the add game route, it's going to get it and take us here, as you can see. And now we're here. So now when we, when we type the uh, add game route, it's going to do a post request. So we put post just right there, okay? So now whenever we click the submit button right here at the bottom, it'll run this, okay? It's going to run add game as a post request, okay? 
So normally you might think that whenever you click submit and the add game route is run, it's going to take us right back to this form. But since we're running a post request, it's going to do something with the data and it's going to send it. Okay. So basically what I mean by sending it, it's going to take all the information here and send it to this add game route. Okay. It's going to send it with that route and then we can use something to catch that information from the route and then we could do something with the data, okay? But one more thing we need to do on this form, we need to actually send the information um, with the variable names, okay? So to do that, we can simply give everything a name. We've already done this like a couple episodes ago, but basically we need to give everything a name, like I said, so that we can identify it whenever we grab it from the post route, okay? So that's what that will uh, enable us to do. So name, title, name, creator, okay? Name, width, name, height name file name okay the name thumbnail file name or oh, no, just thumbnail file okay so anyway um, what this is going to do is whenever it's sending all this data into the post route of add game it's going to um, assign every piece of data from these inputs to the name that is associated with okay so that's something cool. So we'll just go ahead and go back here and we're going to go ahead and uh, reload here, reload the add game route. And so it's going to reset it. So let's try typing some stuff in. So run six uh, booty master one, two, three with is going to be 600 by 800 uh, file name Santa uh, SWF thumbnail is going to be um, Santa picture dot png something like that okay just an example as you can see so we'll click submit and see what happens so now it says cannot post add game okay so if you remember correctly that actually is something we've already worked with before so if we go to any route here let's type something uh just any route okay we'll do uh just something like that now it says cannot get that route okay so that means it cannot get this route that we typed in as a get request of course because whenever we type in you know regular routes it's going to be a get request, right? So it cannot get this route because it doesn't exist, obviously, because we don't have a route that says key, I mean, QWEQWE, okay? That's not a route that we made. So if we go back here, that also means that there is no post route for slash add game, okay? So what we need to do here is go back to uh, app.js and make a post route for that um, route, right? So app.post, and then we can actually add that. So we're going to do a slash add game, like if we've been doing. And then function rec res. So that's going to be the callback function, of course, like we had before. So now what we're going to do here. So now the difference is between this one and this one. This one is obviously a git route. And this one's obviously a post route, okay? And we're going to use this post route whenever we submit the form, like here. Because whenever we click submit, it's going to run this as a post route. So now we're going to go here and take the information that we just sent through here. So we need to take that information somehow, okay? And normally what you want to do is to, uh, store the information in a variable. We'll just call it data, okay? And so the way we get information usually whenever we're working with routes, of course, is doing rec params and then the, the variable name, for example, title. That would be the normal way, of course, if there's a route parameter, but we're not working with route parameters. So the way we do it now is called rec.body, okay? Okay, so now we're capturing the body of the um, post request and then we're storing it in a variable called data. So let's output the value of body or data so we can see what it actually looks like. So let's try that. Um, so yeah, let's do that. So we'll go back here. We'll go ahead and reload here. So, uh, and then we'll just have some information. In. We'll click submit and let's see what happens. And it says undefined, right? So we told it to, we told it to output the value of data, of course. But it says undefined because because we need to get a special npm package that's actually going to parse the value of body um, and you know put it in a form that we can actually read it as. Okay. So anyway, this is the package we're going to we're going to use here. It's called body parser. Okay. So this is going to parse our record.body, of course, and it's going to be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and actually install that. We don't have to do much to make it work, but we're going to have to do something real quick. So npm install body dot, uh, dash parser and then dash dash save to actually save it to our uh, package.json for future use. So that will install of course. And then we can go back here. Oh, let's actually run this again. So node mon. Okay. So that, that now it's running. I'm going to move it over here now. So anyway, we'll go back here to our, you know, our project here. And then now what we need to do is actually to enable it. We need, of course, to, you know, request it here. Um, we don't are required I mean but we don't actually even need this one anymore so we'll get rid of this one 
So yeah, let's require the body parser thing that we just uh, installed. So body uh, body parser, you can call it whatever you want, is equal to require, oops, require body parser, just like that, okay? So that's gonna install it, of course, but we need one more thing that, there's one more thing that we have to do to actually uh, make it work. And so we need to do, um, we'll just put it down here. Uh, right here, app.use, okay? And then we're gonna use the body parser dot URL encoded, and then we're gonna provide a parameter here, and we'll say extended is equal to true, okay? And that's all you have to type in to make this body parser work now. So anyway, that's gonna work now. So let's go ahead and um, go back here to our project, and we'll try it out one more time to see if it actually prints out the values that we're putting in. So we'll reload here, do all this, and submit this and see what it prints out. And it prints out an object here. Awesome, look at that. That's exactly what we need because what we can do is take this object now with all this individual information right here and put it directly into our little database here. That's actually literally perfect, okay? Because the, look how perfect these are. They literally match completely. Um, the structure is exactly the same. We have the title, creator, uh, with, height, file name, and thumbnail file, okay? So now what we need to do, the next step is we need to actually grab this object here and then push it into this game's array of objects, okay? And what we need to do to actually do that um, is do data, or no, what's it called? We need to get the name of it, so games dot push, and that's how you push an object to an array, of course. So uh, games dot push, and then we plug in the data that we wanna push inside of there, or the object, so, so data. But we have one problem because um, you can't actually access games from this little route here because as you can see here, this games array is inside of this route here. So if you know anything about JavaScript scopes and all that stuff, you can't access a variable that's inside of another scope. Basically this little, um, between these two curly brackets here, it's now, it's now hidden to other uh, scopes basically. It's hard to explain because I'm bad at explaining stuff, but basically what we need to do is take it out of here and store it in uh, anywhere outside of these uh, curly brackets. Okay, so just anywhere. So we'll just put it up here. So now it's going to be accessible to any of these routes. Okay, not just that one route that it was inside of. Okay, so we can actually push this now, and then it's going to add that object to this little database here. So there's only one. one so there's only one way to find out if this works. So we'll just go ahead and go back here, and we'll go to add game, and so we'll try typing some stuff in here. Okay, we'll click submit. Oh wait, what we need to do actually is um, make it redirect us to the games thing so we can see the data after it's submitted. But look what we have here, it actually submitted the data that we just put in and now it's showing up as a game. So basically think about how awesome this is what we just did here, okay? So now we're able to actually add games and then take that data, add it to our little database and then it's automatically going to display that data in our database for us seamlessly, okay? It's just so magical to me, it blows my mind, okay? So now what we can do here is after we send the data in, we actually need to re redirect them to that page, you know, that displays all the games. Because if we don't, it's just gonna reload the page continuously like we have here. Let me show you, submit. So now it's just reloading uh, infinitely. So we need to, so one thing we can do is just reroute them to any route. We'll just do the list route here because it displays all the games. So yeah, basically we're gonna do a special little thing here, res, and then instead of render, we're gonna do redirect. So it's gonna redirect them to any route. So we'll do the list route, okay? So that will do all of that for you. So as soon as they push the data or add the data to our database, it's automatically gonna put the user on that page that shows all of the games that they just added, okay? So that's gonna be really cool. So there's only one way to find out. So let's uh, reload here. And it went away, we'll discuss that in a minute. But if we go back to add game, slash add game, and we add a game here, we'll add um, something like this. We'll do uh, pickle, and then pickle, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. Oops, I didn't mean to do that, but it's still submitted. But anyway, so yeah, as you can see, it re redirected us here to this page and it shows the, uh, the game that we just added. So that's really, really uh, cool, right? But if we click play game, it's not going to take us to the game that we just added because, of course, we still need to add the files manually, okay? So in the future, we're going to make it so we can upload the files on the add game route. But for now, we need to still add the game and the picture file separately because um, that's a little complicated for now, okay? So anyway, this is really awesome. So let's actually reload here. Or no, let's. So let me show you something. If we go ahead and stop the um, stop the server and then restart it again, what's going to happen every time is it's going to actually going to reset the database, okay? Because as you can see here, these are the ones that are stored here, okay? 
um, these are forever stored here because it's directly in the code, okay? These cannot be deleted unless we actually delete them like that, okay? But what we're doing here is adding uh, stuff to the our little um, array here with the code here. But this is not going to actually going to save it into our code. I can't do that, okay? So what we need to do in the future is have a database that is able to store the things that we add to it infinitely or keep it in there until we actually delete it ourselves, okay? So basically what I'm trying to say is that in the future we're going to work with databases that is going to allow us to actually add data to um, you know our database and it's going to store all that data until we delete it okay so we we can add games manually now by doing slash add game but it's not going to keep it there until we use a database and we're going to get working with that in the next episode I believe so stay tuned if you're excited for that um, so one more thing I want to do actually is add an actual game here that we can actually play so before we do that I'm actually going to uh, let's add the add game uh, what's it called thing to the menu here so we'll go back to header and we'll add that on there so let's find a thing here um, let me copy this here okay and I'll paste that and we'll do add game and then we'll take them to the add game route just like that and then we should be able to reload and now it's up here okay so yeah like I said I want to do one more thing is uh, and add a game for you guys so we'll go back to the congregate thing just uh, take a game here so we'll do um, We'll do any of these games. We'll do, uh, let's see, a Luna Shooter, whatever. I don't know what this one is, but anyway, so we'll take that. We'll move it into our file structure here. So public, games, keep, and we're going to move it in there just like that. Okay, and we'll rename this to Elona, just anything. And then we'll give it a, we need a thumbnail for that. So uh, I can't find the game, I can't find a, a picture for the game. So I'm just going to take this beautiful picture of Elon Musk and, uh, you know, save it here. Because Elon Musk is a beautiful man. No homo. But we'll just put this in here. Them nails and we'll just uh, call it Elon Musk JPG. Okay. And so now that we actually added the files to, you know, our, um, what's it called, our website. We can actually go back here. It goes to add game and then we'll add all the information. So this is way easier than, you know, typing in ourselves within the, uh, within here. It's way easier. So we can go back here now. And we'll call it Elona Shooter. And it's by who's it by? Uh no Noah Noah. Okay. So Noah Noah. And what's the size of it? 620 by 380. 620 by 380. And it's called Elona.swf. And then we called it Elon Musk. Elon Musk.jpg. And then we'll submit that. And now we have it added here. So if we click play game, it uh well we need to enable flash, it looks like. Right click, or just click, and now it has the game here. So as you can see, it actually worked, and I hope that blows your mind too because that is really cool. So our website is even more awesome now because we can actually add games seamlessly to our website and do some pretty cool stuff. Okay, but as you can see here, if we go and restart our you know our server here, it's going to be gone. Okay, the file will still be in there because of course we still we added it we added that part manually. We can't delete files. Basically, what we need to do, of course, to actually make this stay permanently is have a database okay that's one way and so we're going to work with that in the future episodes because databases are awesome and it's going to make our project even more awesome so anyway i know that was a lot guys but if you have any questions about what we did just ask a question in the comment section or we have a discord in the description where you can check that out join it hang out with us ask questions whatever you want to do and uh yeah also we have a um a link here in the description also where you can find all of the code from today's episode so make sure you do that and if you like this episode, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.